<laughs> All right. Well, it is officially six o'clock, so we will officially start our chat with Jordan Brooks. Hello, everybody. My name is Terry Hofer, and this is the Octagon Shop, and we are part of the Octagon Center for the Arts in downtown Ames, Iowa. We do classes, and we do. Um, we obviously have a gallery uh, for exhibits, and um, part of our our mission is to um, encourage creative self-expression by providing inclusive space and opportunities that bring people together and add to our lives. And so tonight we're bringing together Jordan Brooks for us because he is the master of, of helping people to become expressive and, and learn about what makes their creative juices you know, oh, man. you're just gonna love, if you have not met Jordan, you're gonna just fall in love with him just because we think he's just awesome. As I as well, <laughs> already started. <laughs> you are, you're on a pedestal. We are, we just think you're awesome. Um, we're very excited for everybody to get to know Jordan better uh, uh, this evening. And please share your thoughts uh, and comments. And you can, you can type in a question. And we will see it on the screen, and we can you can ask him that. Um, Jordan Brooks is very very talented in very in a lot of different ways, and not just with his artistic skills. He's got many different qualities and skills that get you that get you Jordan pulled in many different directions. Your life is go. You have so many <laughs> on go. I you know I keep it up. Um, currently, his day job is Director of Multicultural Student Success for the College of Design at Iowa State University. And yep. so let's just start a little bit, a little bit of history, a little bit at the beginning. Uh, if you could tell us, like, how you came to Iowa State, what led you here? Yeah, not a problem. Uh, so, one, first, thank you, Terry, for awesome words and just always showing love and things. I appreciate you very much. And Terry, at the octagon, I thank you. Um, but yeah, uh, how I got to Iowa State, mostly uh, I would say that my, my wife uh, <laughs> is the reason why I got to Iowa State more and really just the state of Iowa, first off. But I I worked in I work in higher education and uh, I was in I was living in Georgia working at Georgia Southern at the time. Um, that I, we were, me and my wife, then fiance, were thinking about where were we going to move and what were we going to do. And so um, <clears throat> she found the job that she loved and wanted to get into up here at Iowa State. Um, when, what was that, like 2016, I think now? Jeez, have <laughs> been here that long? Yes, yeah, so I guess it's like 2016. I'm like counting on 2016. Uh, but then when I got here, I was initially working at Grinnell College. And so I worked there for about two and a half years. And this position that I'm in with the College of Design opened up. And it was actually right at a time when I was thinking about what would a transition for me look like. Um, just kind of building on my experience since that I had um, from Grinnell and wanting to think about what does it look like to bring my diversity, equity, and inclusion kind of related work into a uh, design college. Um, and so it was just like perfect timing uh, with the role opening up and <clears throat> having a few folks that I knew on campus to say, hey, Jordan, you should look at this. This sounds like something you'd be interested in. And so did it. Here we are. And it's been going going pretty good so far. So, yeah. Oh, well, that's lucky for us. And <laughs> Yeah, we're really lucky to have you. Uh, I had mentioned that uh, I was telling people about you and who, who don't know you, who haven't met you, and mm -hmm. describing you know how generous you are and, and sweet and caring and just artistic and creative and loving. And um, is there somebody in your life or was there some experiences? Um, how did you... This, and obviously, it's kind of a question you can't really totally answer, but um, what do you think in your life helped drive you towards what you're doing now? And what yeah. you are? Right. I would, I would definitely say that my mother and my grandmother and my grandfather, um, so my grandma, um, my grandma um, Carson or grandma Dantzler, right? 
um, and my grandpa, grandfather Carson and my mother were probably the folks who really instilled a lot of that into me um, in the most memorable ways, right? Like my granddad's thing was always take care of the family, take care of the family first, right? And so just that idea of positioning myself to be in a space of service, one to my family, um, I think I definitely got that from my granddad. And then my grandmother was always just talking about um, not letting the evils of the world change you. Um, if you have a light, you let it shine, right? Also tell church, a church background too. Um, so it was like, don't let any other folks dim your light, keep keep shining, baby. Um, that was definitely my grandma. And then my mother just, right? I think my mom's like the epitome of love, right? Um, and I think uh, her definitely, she instilled a lot of that sense of care. She was, a, she's a nurse, um, did that in the military as well, right? Um, just constantly pouring into our family, other people, um, service related things, right? Like, so I think a lot of that was instilled by those three, I could say. Oh, that's, that's cool. That makes me think of, of this, the mother. That's exactly where that came from. Is right. it? Oh, yep. I yep. love these. I love looking at these. They're so great. And they kind of need to be sold together, I think. Oh, yeah. So like right. my mom. Yeah. Right. <laughs> don't, don't separate them out. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. My mom, uh, she had started her twist. So I had the locks and things and stuff. And I, this oh. is the second that, But my mom started her twists and things. And we were thinking about um and I remember she and I were having a particular conversation just about growing life lessons. What do you get? What's kind of going on back and forth? And so I thought about me younger, right? And so these, they're not supposed, they don't necessarily look like us, right? But it's just supposed to capture that feeling of my mom thinking and contemplating about me as her son. And then me at the same time thinking about my relationship and stuff to her and just like how I'm kind of trying to make sense and process the world. Right. Um, and so she's kind of her head is down a little bit. Right. And more of like a prayer kind of space. And I'm kind of like boldly. I'm still eyes closed and thinking. But I'm kind of like lifting my head up like I, like I know what I'm about to do. And I think there was always that kind of relationship there. I was just going headstrong into something. And my mom was like, please protect this boy. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. that's yeah, as. Yeah, most mothers can relate to that, but I think it's something extra yeah. for um, yeah. for for black mothers. It's certainly for those with, with young black boys. Yeah, most definitely. Yeah, most definitely. Yeah. Oh, um, my next question is. Oh, oh, here's some nice comments here. Joy. <laughs> So Mariah is one of, Mariah is actually one of the people who, when it came down to me getting the no self together. Oh, yeah. Um, and the shirts, my draw from life shirts and everything. That's Mariah. Right. Oh, so, good job. That's actually Mariah's handiwork. So shout out to you. Um, much love. And I appreciate you dearly. Um, so she always helps me with bringing different ideas together as a graphic designer. I'm like, I trust you with the graphic design stuff. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> and you can buy these shirts from Jordan, or you can also pick one up here in the shop. We have several sizes available, and they're only they're only one twenty one dollars. So not, and they're nice and soft. They're really soft. Right, right, that good material. <laughs> and then Ed says facts. That's and I think my. It's a little delayed, you know. It's from from a couple of minutes ago, but we were talking about your relationship with your mom and your grandparents. So, so, what up, Dean? Yeah, <laughs> it's cool when people react like that. Okay. So, the next question is uh, Your art is very connected to your ideas about self awareness and self expression. And how did that come about? Yeah, most definitely. I would say my relationship with art has always been a really big and like reflective, introspective kind of space for me. Um, Right, just going background into my life again a little bit. You got so you have a. Um, I grew up going to a Catholic grade school, uh, predominantly white school, and 
just trying to make sense and meaning of my own life, right? And so trying to, I use art as that way to express that, right? And, and um, to help me kind of visualize and make sense of what I was seeing and, and experiencing. The other part of that too was that I just was, I enjoyed it, I loved it. So like my dad had comic books from like, you know, like original cool things when they're first coming out and all that. And so I used to just love looking through the comic books, flipping through the pages. And then my dad's from New York City. And so we would go to New York. And I remember seeing graffiti for the first time and like him letting me know, like, you know, people talk down on graffiti and things and say it's like, you know, disrupting society and all that. And he's like, but it's mainly about like making a camp on your place and saying you're here, especially for people who are not always acknowledged as being here. And so for me, art has been like, oh, these are, it's been my way of saying I'm here. And then um, as time has gone on, I was like, it's not enough to just say you're here. It's like, well, who are you? If you're gonna let people know that you're here, then what are you about? And so I've used it to help me again, make sense, make meaning of who I am, what I'm experiencing, what I'm going through, um, <clears throat> the conversations that I have with, my different friend groups and just different people, walks of life, right? Like a lot of times I use some type of creative expression to, you know, use it as a marker or a capstone, right? For whatever that experience was. Um, so if I ever come back to it again later, it, you know, it can pick up for me a little bit. Um, yeah. That's, but then that's some other... <laughs> was that what you said? There's, and there's like, so there's like the interest, there's the introspective side of it, right? But then there's the communal side to it too, like working with young kids and watching them draw. And the more they're drawing and painting and talking, like they start sharing about themselves. And then I just got like captivated by that of like, all we're sitting here is sketching and all of a sudden, like all this is just coming out about a person. And I'm like, I need to, I need to harness that, I need to work with that, so. Yeah, art can be very powerful that way. Um, we need to back up because I want you to see the rest of these comments that people have popped in here. Mariah says, I just want everyone to know Jordan is every bit as wonderful as you said. I believe you, Mariah. He was chosen by the ancestors. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Uh, that we're not yet. Now. <laughs> yeah? So we're not about to do all this tear stuff right now. Let's stop. Oh, it's just so wonderful. And, 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 of course, Z said it's the softest shirt. I own. That's my little sister. What up, Nene? Wow, oh, that's so sweet. Come to Ames. <laughs> or Carmen has a uh, question. Boss man, how are you finding your inspiration during this COVID-19 pandemic? Yeah, most def. Um, so my inspiration during the pandemic has been going back to what is no self about, right? And the last letter in no self, K-W-S-O-F, is fellowship. And this whole COVID-19 pandemic has put us in a space where we are not in community and connection with each other like we were before. And so for me, I really chose to lock in on fellowship and how can I maximize that? So whether that's through um, meeting people socially distant and safe, for some type of a creative outing, let's do it. If it's phone calls, video calls and things with folks, um, sharing each other's artistic expression and creativity, that's the thing. I try to really surround myself with other um, creatives in Iowa as well, especially so after the show that we did with the Octagon this summer, um, I connected with a lot of the different black artists that worked with us. Um, and we just stayed in community and connection with each other. And so I think from that, that's been helping me a lot. And through thinking about what, how do I make these connections, um, maintain connections and make more connections has really directed a lot of what I've been doing artistically. And that's part of your email group and your, your, your uh, sketch group? Yep. Yep, and so, right, thank you, helping me say my own stuff and even clear. Yeah. So, so I have, so if you, I have an email group where, it, like, at least twice a month when life is good and working well, right, I send an email twice a month that has some type of a creative reflection, some type of, like, sharing with you what's kind of going on 
with in my mind, my thoughts and things and how that's relating to what's going on um, in the world and whatnot. So yeah, at the top of my website in the banner it says join the Draw From Life group. Uh, if you click that, my website's knwslf.com. You can jump in with me on that. And then what we're going to start, we started it last fall, right? So again, pandemic life, what do we do? Uh, every other week, we were, every other week, a few of us were getting together over Zoom. And in the morning on Saturday, we were sketching for like an hour and just talking and connecting with each other. And that became a nice practice. And so what I want to do is bring that back now for the spring. Um, and actually, it'll be next Saturday. So one one Saturday a month, the last Saturday of the month, uh, we'll do like these sketch groups. Cause I gotta keep my timing and everything together. But yeah, so the uh, that's how it how it goes. Our draw from life group, connecting together. You can get the emails. Um, then you can also join with me. And it doesn't have to be sketching or painting. You can like poetry, any kind of creative expression that you do, do it. Right. Um, it's just us connecting for that time together. Oh, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. Um, maybe now would be would now be a good time to start talking about your note to self painting series. Yeah, sure. Yeah, we can jump into there. All right. So we can see this is note to self one. Yep. Maybe you just want to start describing that. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, with oh, this, wait, hold up a sec. Okay. We need to. I need to get you some more messages here. Edward. That's my, father. That's my dad. What's Hi. Good? Hi, Mr. Brooks. It's so nice to <laughs> know your son. He's wonderful. And let's see. It's freezing. Where can I get a hoodie? <laughs> idea. You totally should get some hoodies. Good <laughs> right. idea. I like that. Yeah, I'm definitely wanting to uh, get into hoodies. When I, the space that I was working with before, I wasn't really liking how um, the printing, the ink was like soaking into the material. Yeah. So I took it off because I wanted to make sure that it was good. Um, I'm thinking about maybe actually having it like an embroidered kind of hoodie or sweatshirt. Oh, yeah, yeah. Anyway. So I don't know if anybody's watching this, if there are any other creators who that's the Shoot thing. Shoot them some ideas. Shoot them some ideas. Oh, yeah. man, who taught you how to use YouTube? How sweet is that? <laughs> <laughs> we got the whole family going here. Oh, All man. Right. Amazing work and story. Proud of you. Our cause speeds on its way. Can you tell me what UNC means in that comment? Amazing work and story, UNC. Um, um, he calling me Unk. So, he, so David, oh, what's good? Oh. What's good? My, David's my friend, <laughs> my community brother. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, I think Edward knows how to get one, so you should probably order one. Uh oh, uh oh. <laughs> yeah, so, hey, Ed, I, I, Edward, I can, I can ship you one. You can buy one from me. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay, so let's go. Let's go back to this now. So now we can start talking about. No problem. Self one. So actually, maybe let's go to the other the other one first. The, the little one here. That'll help with the story. Yeah. All right. That. There we go. So, again, no self breaks down to. I guess I didn't say that. No self breaks down. K N is knowledge. W is wisdom. S L is self love, and the F is for fellowship. And so those four concepts right um i feel like you bring those together to come into this knowledge of who you are and this knowledge of self and so i do a lot because i said i was in higher i'm in higher education i of course do a lot of workshops and facilitating and things and we're up here with it a lot like in our mind i mean we feel it right but it's in our mind and in these conversations that we have and i realized i was like i haven't really turn that into visual art at all um, and played with that in any way. Like I use art to reflect, right? But I never actually tried to capture no self in a visual art type of form. And so <clears throat> this first piece here is supposed to be like a younger me kind of reflecting and thinking back on life. And so I was mixing both acrylic painting and some pen and ink work. And so all the symbols and things 
in the black and white pen and ink are either representing like my family lineage, um, Erie, Pennsylvania, where I'm from, we have this dock. And so like over, that would be what the guy, over his left shoulder in the corner, right? There's that little tower, right? That's the docks and stuff, which is a really important space for me family wise and just, and everything. So, um, <clears throat> and then there's like other random symbols of like music where you can see the schools that I went to, right? Um, the little, yep, those names down there, 814 being like our area code, just some other random little things that are in there. Um, <clears throat> and so from this painting though, I was like, maybe I can do this like, here's a person, but then this shape could be like a portal into what's going on inside of their mind or whatever, which is now become this note itself. And so note to self one is my first kind of attempt at that. And the way that this, I see it kind of evolving and flowing is that you have this person who's supposed to be right, like this representation of like my inner thoughts or anything like, or something, right? And then the cube, um, the cube is supposed to be symbolic of knowledge, the pyramid for wisdom, and the sphere for self-love and the relationship or the fellowship between the three of those can create a portal into seeing something else so i feel like what i might do is right like maybe he's holding the pyramid and inside the pyramid there's a a lesson of like a wisdom related lesson or something that's inside of the pyramid if he's holding the sphere there's a self-love related lesson inside the sphere but then the three of them kind of combine in some other way or something. I'm not sure yet. We're, we're going to play with it as we keep going, right? Uh, we'll have this portal into what's going on, which is like the kind of, it's like the combination of all of those concepts at one, right? Uh, whatever that kind of reflection or revealing is. And so I got a bunch of random sketches and things in my notebook. <laughs> um, and we'll see, try to turn them into paintings as we go. Um, <laughs> Yeah. And so I like this, like, so one, right, me, my Black identity um, and, cult and culture as I'm unpacking and understanding that, too. That's why I want to paint these in Black backgrounds um, and have the colors come up off of it. Uh, it's just like a, I am surrounded by a part of and outside of all that, right, of my Blackness. And then this is also me making sense of that. Um, and sharing these different little little gems or these jewels, as me and my dad would say, um, or these crystals, as me and my dad would say, of uh, knowledge, wisdom, and self-love with you. So, yeah, oh, that's where it's kind of heading. Oh, that's great. Um, and really powerful, and I can't wait to see, you know, what you'll have coming next. Um, this, unfortunately, is not for sale. <laughs> so, right, my, my hope is that you would see a bunch of them and then right. like we can have it up somewhere and you can literally look at my thought process and it happened so yeah so yeah maybe we'll get you to have a, a, a an exhibit a one man one man solo show yeah. um so your sister is helping with uh uh getting your work uh, sold, which is great. Thank you, Z. And we will, um, we do have links that will be included so people will be able to get in touch. With Tilly, you. hey, what's up? And, yeah, from Grinnell College Museum of Art. It's so great to see your work and hear you talk about it. Love it. So you've got your fans right. and we've got, it, we've got lots of commenters here. So Keisha Booker, love knowing all the little things in this painting. The dock is the best place in Erie. So that must be somebody you know from. Yeah, yeah. Keisha's yeah. Best, friend, best friend from high school. So oh, yeah, no. we've had oh. those conversations on the dock, right? Where you're trying to make sense and meaning of life. So, right, this is, this is, that's the space. That's why it's definitely in there. Yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. So cool. Um, I don't know who this is. brother to the night. Would you consider your work to be a part of the new Renaissance movement? Good question. Is wow. there a new Renaissance movement? What is the new Renaissance movement? Are you part of that? 
I don't know, honestly, right? Um, <clears throat> I feel like if that's the case, maybe a bunch of people will tell me one day and then I'm like, okay, cool. <laughs> 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 like, I'll evaluate and see. I feel like, um, I do definitely think though that specifically in this time that there is some different art movements that are popping up or going off or right, like kind of coming together. I don't, know, I don't know, starting or coming together is the right way to put it. The language might not be there for me just yet, but there's some different ways of art expression and whatnot that are coming out and around right now. And I'm definitely excited by them. Um, I don't necessarily know or see if I consider myself to be a part of any of them specifically, but that's something that I guess for me, if people saw that, see that, then I welcome it, you know? Wow. Yeah. You're just being, you're just being um, humble. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> well, Ed Williams, proud of you, your journey and how far you've come. Jordan speaking looks good on you. Keep doing this. Yes. He is a very good speaker. And you, to, you get invited to, to talk to groups and. Uh, so, yeah, that's a good trend. That's actually a great transition for the pieces that are here. So, oh. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. And, and I'll just say you got still lots of people. Uh, 80. 80. What up? <laughs> Again, frat brother, another frat brother. Uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> powerful, powerful messages through your art from Nicole. Hi, what's up, Bart? Good to see you. All right, Victoria, <laughs> I love hearing the backstories to your art. Keep up the great work. Thank you so much. Posted, this was a few minutes ago. Yes, with an exclamation point. So we're yeah, still talking about paintings, I think. Uh, L. Wesley Harris Jr., deep messages, Dr. Brooks, naming and claiming it. Come on, bro, come on. You're going to be Dr. Brooks here pretty soon because one of the other many things that you do, you're getting your PhD currently, correct? I am. I am. Yeah. <laughs> What's wrong with me? <laughs> I don't know. The only thing I can say is at least you two don't have any kids yet. So that's good. Or yeah. wait, right? Yeah, 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 exactly. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and so you have that for you. And I love your artwork and the stories within it. So we'll pause right there. There's another question coming up, but we're going to go back um, to uh, back up to what was. Uh, the Renaissance, and then uh, proud of you and your journey and how far you've come. Speaking looks good on you. Keep doing this, which you are speaking. Okay, so you do speak to groups, yeah. and that led you to pulling down some of your artwork behind you. Yeah, indeed. So one thing, all right, um, to definitely shout out. Um, so, oh, oh wait, let me see. Rewind. Rewind a little yes, bit. Yes, we're talking to. I do diversity, equity, inclusion related talks. I come in yeah. work different programs, right? Schools and things, uh, and other organizations. And that's been beautiful, amazing. Uh, loving the work that I'm able that I'm able to do with people. Um, but some way, the way that I've been able to bring creativity into it in a different manner has been through guided painting. And so I want to shout out. Uh, James and Bridget Neely, uh, who are up in Des Moines, um, because they have uh, bottles in Bottega um, in Des Moines. And I've been working with them for the past couple of years, right? Um, and doing different, and just like doing the different like paint and sip, wine and paint things. And so I guess also, right? If you're looking for some fun, please check out Bottle in Bottega Des Moines. Um, and you might be able to paint with me there. Um, but one of the things that I've done is that uh, I've also started coming up with what are some pieces that I would like to create and use in my speaking spaces, right? And so just the other day, I did a session with uh, Indiana State University. Um, and so shout out to my friend Tiffany out there, who's the director in their um, <clears throat> African American Cultural Center space, uh, but I really think it's important for young kids, especially black kids, um, to see art, engage with art, right? Uh, see their self in art, to make it, to support it, for families, right, to support it, 
go to that local gallery, go to that local uh, shop um, and support the artists who are there, um, whether the shop is black owned or not, right? Like I think engagement with the arts is big and necessary and a vital part of our, our cultural development. And so for me, creating some different images that like I can know I can take with different spaces or take the different places and we can paint them together, but then we can have that discussion has been you know, really meaningful and fun to me wow. because I get to talk about the thing that I'm also doing during my PhD program and that I'm talking about all the time, but right, be able to spread that in a fun and accessible way with other people. And then you have that painting, that piece, right, as like this thing that pulls you to that memory, pulls you back to that conversation. So um, that's been a really valuable part of my, my work right now. Oh, that's wonderful. Um... Here's a really good question that kind of can expand on that from Justin Roberson, who we need some of his artwork in here in the show. Justin, <clears throat> how do you embody your message outside of the images? Mm -hmm. How do you look for the same themes in your life and then recreate them in your art? Yes. Yeah, yeah. I think, well, I mean, thanks for the plant, Justin. <laughs> <I appreciate laughs> Right, because he and I, right, like he and I have these conversations uh, on a weekly basis in the summer during COVID. It was probably felt like daily basis. But I think because my art is really just me reflecting on me, making sense of my life experiences and whatnot, right, um, it doesn't, I don't have to go far to find it. And I think how I try to, uh, so when it comes to the, how do you look for these themes in your life, right? I feel like that part is really easy because again, I'm just, you know, capturing my day. I'm capturing me, I'm capturing myself in that moment. When it comes to how do I try to embody though, some of the things that come up, right? There, there are moments where some of my art is a stretch, right? It's calling me to be something more than what I'm currently am, right? Or it might be calling me to uh, think or wrestle with something. Um, and maybe come to a different position or stance on it than what I had before. So how I try to embody it is just like while I'm going through that process of making, I'm legitimately wrestling with that idea and that concept. So for me, right, the art is an artifact of the process that took place. Um, yeah. And hopefully what happens then is that I am embodying those thoughts, those feelings, that understanding, that new knowledge and wisdom, right, um, as I go on and live on. And then I think maybe the... <clears throat> Hopefully the other man, like the way that that shows true, right, is then how people respond to me or my work, right? And that they're like, Jordan, I see you also doing the things that you're saying and talking about. You may fall short a few times, but we all stumble, right? But I see you ultimately trying to live and embody the things that you're, you're speaking about uh, and expressing. So... <clears throat> Right, I guess it's also me asking mm -hmm. and taking also that feedback back from other people. So, yeah. Yeah, and that's and that's part of what you help people learn to do too when mm -hmm. in your groups. Um, yeah, you're just so you're just so gifted with words and helping people find that in themselves and in addition to your to yourself. And Cameron posted this uh, about five minutes ago. Keep spreading the word. So hi, Cam. Yeah, yeah, I'm on here, yes. Um, and then your dad, would you say that your message can be shared by all movements and still be unique to the individual using as they know self? Uh, yeah, most definitely, right? Like, I mean, so yes, I think so. And that's because at the end of the day, my artwork is a story. It's a narrative, right? It's an expression. And I think as people, we learn from other people's stories and narratives and their, and their telling of their life experience. And then what you do is you hold on to the pieces that make sense for you and you let go of the other parts that, that don't, right? And it's just the more though that we're able to interact with other narratives, other stories. I think the more full of a human experience we can have, I think the, the so my initial hesitancy was right, like there might be some movements 
where some of the things that I talk about, think mm -hmm. about with may not align with their own values, right? They may not align with their way of being and knowing their self. And so my initial hesitancy was like, mm, maybe it's not for them. And I guess I would still say that like my primary goal and purpose, right, is for my black people, right? But that doesn't mean that other folks cannot see themselves in that as well, right? Because there's still a common human struggle. So what's what's clear for me is what I'm ex the life experience that I'm expressing and talking about. And hopefully within what folks are able to do is they're able to connect with the authenticity of me expressing that. And so even though we might be talking about different cultures, we might be talking about different, coming from different, you know, times, perspectives and things and stuff of that nature, they're able to connect with that authenticity. And then through that, they're still able to see the lesson. Um, and I mean, to my dad, like, you know that, right? If I can't, if I can't learn from a person, even if they don't match, <clears throat> up with me, my thoughts and things, but if I can't allow myself to still see the lesson that's lying in there, then I might not be working hard enough, right? And so, um, I You're think- You're such a wonderful person. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the, I think that's how it would go, right? So yeah, I think, I guess some, to sum it, I feel like I should sum it, and I feel like I do this all the time, but <laughs> to sum it, what I'm saying is, yes, my art is specifically about a particular experience and about is about my particular black experience and it's about my black community diasp diasporically and me trying to make sense of that diasporically. But that does not mean, that should not mean for another person that they can't find their connection to that. Um, and if you can't and you do struggle with that, maybe on the DEI side of my life, you and I can talk some more. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Um, okay, you definitely make an impact with people. Um, I want to show you, we're behind on some comments here. Dee Langford, your work is appreciated. Thank you for being inspirational and for making art accessible to marginalized and underrepresented communities. Absolutely. Which is, that's a special, special thing. And um, you you're enjoying the East Coast. <laughs> <laughs> Linda Carson Brooks, is that mom or another sister? That is mom. That is mom. Hi, mom. I've always loved your artwork, Erie Art House. So that's a local <laughs> town. So <laughs> the okay, we got a plug. The first time that I went somewhere to help me learn about art was I went to the uh, Erie Art House as a kid, and oh. so I loved like you know what is it the Discovery Channel and all those things, right? And so oh. um, the first pastel drawing I did was of like a Amazon tree frog or something like that Ooh, right yeah. still has it in the frame in the house Aww. up and center and I was like and I, and I love it right because it's it's again every time I come home right it's also a reminder of what that so it's a reminder of what it meant for me to have family and a mom, right, who was like, your work is amazing and put it up on the wall. And it's interesting because we just, I just had this conversation with um, some other folks when we were having this, uh, we were, you know, working through why art is important to have in the home, right? And it's, again, it's that thing of either you're seeing yourself reflected in the work that somebody else has made, or you're seeing the creation that you've done be loved and supported and, and lift and uplifted, right? And so I think that's so meaningful and important in a person's development and in their overall sense of self. And so, yes, shout out to you all, much love. Oh, that's, and um, that's what I think Erie Art House probably tries to do. And it sounds like you took classes there and we yeah. have classes here at the Art Council. so I gotta plug the yes. We are, I wanna skip down to Justin's question and then we'll go back up to Grinnell College and um, into L. Wesley Harris's question. So I haven't forgotten about you, but Justin, when you were talking earlier, where does fulfillment fit into the no self narrative, either the makes or yourself? Where does fulfillment? What mm -hmm. do you think he's meeting there? Where does fulfillment fit into the- I mean, that's the F. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, hmm. 
Is it the makes or yourself? Are you fulfilling? Is it tied together? I would. Uh, that's where I'm. That's where I'm going. And I'm trying because I'm trying not to cheat the answer. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, I think right the fulfillment. So for me, one of the other things that I say with no self is see yourself, know yourself, be yourself. And really what that breaks down to is, right, if you see yourself right in the visual arts, if you see yourself out in the world, that gives you your first kind of stories and things of what you could be. And as you kind of wrestle with and make sense of all of that that you've seen, you start to come into the space of knowing. And then the more that you act and what you know, that shifts around into who you are or how you how you be, right? <laughs> like to say it colloquially like that, like it's, it's being you. And so I think the fulfillment comes in the space when you feel you are being you, right? And knowing that being you isn't a destination, right? But it's a how you go about the journey is the thing, right? Um, so yeah, I would say where it fits is in the see yourself, know yourself, be yourself, and that's that space of being, right? And knowing that as I go on this journey, as I do this thing, right, called life. I'm directing it, but I'm directing it in a way that is not harmful and neglectful and abusive towards others, but in a way that's in good community and fellowship with them. So, yeah. Oh, that's lovely. Yeah, Justin, Justin continued. He says, it's okay if it's together and you can replace fulfillment with joy. Same difference. Yeah. yeah. The kind yeah. of joy the soul knows and the mind body knows. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Justin you know. is another wonderful, fabulous human being. He knows it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and of course, Cameron Gray. He's in the, yeah, just wonderful people on this chat. This is great. I'm um, here going back to a question. Love it that you're building cultural capital for kids. Will you do books? That's a great question because I think you would be a <laughs> fabulous author for young adults yeah. and young children or for children. Yeah. So funny thing, right? Um, <laughs> funny there thing, you go. How all this stuff comes together. And it's not that I'm trying to make it happen, but we'll see what happens, right? But so in my PhD program, one of my chairs is uh, their research is involved with children's literature, right? And how Ooh. stories and things and stuff kind of like are passed on and things through children's literature. And so I'm definitely sure there will be a piece of that that comes into play. There's another part in that. So just like a couple of days ago, I was with the Ames Library to uh, read books uh, for Black Heritage Month. Oh, yay. And so while I'm literally, while I'm reading the book though, I'm like, I should do something like this. <laughs> Yes, amazing. <laughs> like the thought hit, and I was like, "Huh, maybe that's a thing." And um, I know a goal of mine, right? For so we had talked about like fam children, families, and things like. So a goal of mine, right, is to have you know art all over the home and things. But I think it's also a piece of having that in books and having that the books, right, is also that gateway. And I think it's in a similar way to like the comic books that. I read right from my that my dad. Sure. There's the images and all that, right? It gives me the imagination for the things that are fantastical and whatnot, right? But then there's also what the stories and the comics are. So I see, I could see children's books and things in general being like that uh, on the in that space. But then the PhD side of me, so I know higher ed side of me. I think I'm going to be, I'm going to write and publish things and stuff, right? It may not be children's books and I will hopefully, you know, not make it just like the dry academic stuff, but hopefully something that's <laughs> fun, fun to read and whatnot. So yeah, I, I see it as a potential. It's not, I'm not actively engaging in it just yet, but like I see the, I see the potential pathways. You know? Well, obviously, Everybody thinks that you should and you do be fabulous. But I will remind people that you are so going in so many different directions and you have so many, so many so things. So my friends and family, though, they should know that if they're saying that, that it means ah. they're probably going to end up in it. <laughs> 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 it's probably going to be a story 
that has oh, been that's like, cool. like uh right half like a lot of my frat brothers who've already commented one the one publication that i have out um in one of the publications i have as far as student affairs is concerned their names are like up and through all of it they're like the pseudonyms for the people i made up in my story so be careful, <laughs> <what you're asking. laughs> be careful. <laughs> well i mean you can only a lot of times you know you do have to pull from your own experiences and yeah, stuff yeah. you know when you're when you're doing it um another question i, I want to get back to um L. Wesley Harris Jr., what are you reading or watching or otherwise engaging with that's providing inspiration these days? Yeah, yeah. so <clears throat> majority of my inspiration as far as what I'm reading and everything is all really related to my, uh, my PhD. Um, and a lot of that is around racial and ethnic identity development it's also around different kind of creative practices. I think the one person whose name comes to mind right now, uh, her name is her, she's Dr. Uh, Patricia Banks, and she's at, um, I'm about to butcher this, so I don't want to say it, but Dr. Patricia Banks, I want to say it's Mount Holyoke or something like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dr. Patricia Banks, actually. Is it near? If it's near, I'll grab it. But either way, she has a book that's called Represent. Um, she, also, she has a more recent book that's looking at the consumption of art, um, Black identity development, and kind of like the, more of like the, the money side to it, I think, right? I haven't fully gotten to read it all the way just yet. Um, but the represent one was about how engagement with Black arts, whether that's through philanthropy, through collecting art, um, through going to shows and galleries, how essential that is um, in how uh, middle-class Black families were constructing their Black uh, identity. And so I've been diving into a lot of her stuff, different articles and things and things that she's written lately. Um, <clears throat> the other stuff that I'm watching, I'm really just watching people express themselves and uh, people, you know, live out their cultures. Uh, so whether that's through YouTube videos, documentaries, movies, and things like, for me, I'm starting to see like, I just want to be a student of our cultural expression, right? And so um, I'm definitely taking all of that in. Like, um, actually, it's just talking with Wes uh, Wesley about the um, Judas and the Black Messiah movie that just came out. Um, yeah. And I'm like, that in and of itself is a whole thing to watch, dissect, dive into, um, ask yourself questions about, reflect to yourself, reflect with a group of people, right? Um, and then if you think movies, I'm sure I haven't, I, I'd have to watch it again, but I know, I remember there were different scenes where I'm like, that. <laughs> that setup, right, is a powerful image. Um, and so just like, I think, you know, flipping through, scrolling through all of the different things is, has been a big thing for me uh, as a lady. Yeah. Wonderful. Um, yeah, we all, I, I can't, I'm just not gonna say much because I can't talk like you, you're fabulous. Um, <laughs> back to you writing books, your sister has an idea. <laughs> oh, you know that. You know that, right? So like, there's so right. There's definitely, I would say, so the other side of how do how do I come to be, right? I think it's definitely a part of my relationship to my sister. And so my sister and I are six years apart. And I will say that I was like, I want a sister. It's happening, and I called it. And then it happened, right? Man, oh, sister. you were you were wanting your parents to have. Yep. Just I I went to school one day and was like. I'm, ha I'm going to have a little sister. And my teacher was like, congratulations to my mom. And my mom was like, I'm not pregnant. <laughs> Couple months later, Bing. Time, right? <laughs> you are. <laughs> so but I say that to say me and my sister have a special relationship because I just, I really love her deeply, right? And I think when you think of a message for yourself, if I'm thinking from the storybook side, right? Of like, what does it look like to, teach somebody to be their best self, but also for 
uh, for a younger sibling, like to have an example so that they can be better and greater than you, right? Aww. Like that's always been like what my kind of like thing was. And so I feel like as the older sibling, it was like, I need to be here so that she can be like right way up there, right? Um, and so I feel like that would be a cool thing to put into a children's book. <laughs> yes, yeah. yes. Yep. Stop what you're doing right now and get started. Okay. I gotta write me back clearly. I gotta start writing it down. I'm gonna put. I'm gonna just put it in my sketchbook, and then yeah. at the summer time, we'll really think about it. And then she'll have graduated too with her pharmacy degree, so we can kind of sell and think about that together. Yeah. Okay. Oh, you could collaborate. On yeah. That. Yeah. yeah, yeah right? um, I'll let you, you can voice it too, Janet. You can voice it. <laughs> yeah, you'd have to have an audio version. <laughs> <laughs> All right. How about um, has your creative work helped you through dark times? Mm, most definitely. Do you use art to cope? Yeah, most definitely I do. Right. Um, so kind of going back to the Georgia Southern days, um, there was a so during that time of me working there, um, The one that what's most vivid right during the time of me working there is the murder of Sandra Bland. And oh, yeah. knowing that, and so with my students, colleagues and things, right, you know, we go out, we protest, we have the discussions, we do the different things, right? Um, and I real and then so and in, in, in I was working in residence life at the time. And so a part of that culture is you're always like having one-on-one -on -one meetings with your students, right? And you're processing like work things and stuff like that, right? And oftentimes my the students I work with, they would flip it back on me. But there was one time in particular having a one-on-one -on -one meeting and it got flipped back on me. And it was like, Jordan, how are you actually caring for yourself? And I was like, oh, shoot. <laughs> Yeah, right? I actually had to, when I sat back and thought about it, I was like, I've been holding things to a side because I've definitely been like wanting to present not necessarily not like a not a false image. Right. But want to present that like I'm here for you. And so in presenting that I'm here for you, here for us at large. I never really thought about what being there for me also meant, though, right? And what that what that would take. And so, having that conversation, me and that student and a couple other folks, we set up a table outside of our residence hall, and we just started painting and drawing and talking. Um, oh, wow! For the rest of the day, right? It was like I was like, all right, cool. clear the schedule. Here we go. Let's dive into it. And so uh, I think, th and that also is really a big part that really birthed no self and oh, all yeah. that was then and having that and then being able to do those different creative practices and exercises with my students to do something for me, but also with them and in community yeah. like that. All of that experience really shaped this. Um, and so, yes, I definitely go to art in dark times and spaces or in hard times and spaces. Um, but maybe is your art different when you're in fulfilled or joyful times? Uh, <laughs> it's supposed to remind you that if this question is too personal, you don't have to. Answer. Yeah, no, no, maybe, maybe, right? I mean, right, when life is just feeling good and lovely, right, I probably paint a lot of just like, you know, beautiful, flowy, kind of cool looking stuff, right? Like or just like the uh, love looking kind of things, right? But then when I'm really wrestling with something, it probably gets, yeah, 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 right? Like, like yeah. a good, just random, beautiful moment, here you go, right? Like it's, it's something like that. And then when, it, when, when it's a little bit more rough, I also probably, I go to pen and ink a lot more when oh. it is something that I'm like wrestling with because the pen is something that I've just always used, right? You know, you're a little kid at your desk and you're just drawing with your pen. And so I feel like I go there a lot more uh, than I do full paintings because it's probably also, it's less of something that I'm going to end up showing to people. Not that I won't show you, but it's, 
yeah. It's yeah. just in my notebook. That's cool. That's cool. Um, one pre oh, uh, so you made your sister cry when you were doing <laughs> <laughs> And <clears throat> she says he took all the artistic ability from the gene pool. So yeah, <laughs> let's handle the audio. <laughs> <laughs> and your dad says, speaking of gene pool. <laughs> Right. I'm just like you know, your parents it. must be amazing because you know I mean, yeah yeah because you're pretty amazing and your sister's hilarious so you know, <laughs> that's, that's fun also fun um your dad says oh what a sweet the two I think he's trying to say the two of you have exceeded all our expectations and dreams for you both we are blessed yeah you are much love you <laughs> <laughs> yeah, y'all over here trying to make eyes water and stuff. Yes, stuff. absolutely. Are there any mediums you're interested in experiencing and experimenting with but haven't gotten a chance to yet? So, yes, I haven't really messed with like 3D sculpture type stuff, right? So, oh, yeah. like clay or woodwork, like I feel like there's, there's going to get to a space where eventually I'm like, I'm going to want the things I'm doing to take up legitimate physical space. And so oh, yeah. I've already like I've already messed with performance art, so I take up the space. I have right. props and things that take up the space, right? And I guess you could see like the remnant or the artifact that comes at the end of my performance as a thing, but it's not with the same intention as like a sculpture or something like that. So that would be cool. The other thing that I want to do is I'm really interested in learning how to make paint from like the earth. So like to take soil and different things right like and turn that into different pigments that yeah. would be cool because then right like i could go to a place and i could use the sediment and everything from there to make these different colors and these pieces and i think there's an important part in this whole no self knowledge of self thing i've talked a lot about like our connection to people and internally but there's a great piece of how that's situated in space or in place right and so i think the physicality of being able to take different soils and things and sediments and rocks and random stuff and turn that into pigments and paint with it um would take what i'd like to do to a whole, to a totally different place so yeah <clears throat> all right okay so um and i think that's really cool i also think that you would do amazing as doing some public art um, and mm -hmm. having them, you could have your hand in some really cool sculptures outdoor. But yeah. when you're out doing your talks and talking with groups of people, mm -hmm. you know, they don't have anything they can physically take away, but you are giving them a wonderful experience and time for self-reflection and stuff. And that's, that's really, really important. Carmen says, receive all that goodness. Man, people are just giving you what you put out authentic love which yeah that's 100 percent, 100 absolutely gotta agree with that i i take it all i love it all <laughs> black man it. cooking just let the tears go you're in my family you've got a beautiful thing going yes he does and yes i love incorporating the soil and environment oh yeah you know it, you know it doc oh, right. that's wonderful such so many good people out there um for those of us who don't know you as well Mm -hmm. oh, oh wait black man says clays could be would be really cool yeah yeah i think messing with clay could be could be interesting yeah we have a we have a ceramic artist in the shop that she's taken over from her dad but he dug his own clay huh. um, yeah he's mm -hmm. dug it out of the ground all by himself he didn't pour it um, um, so, yeah. some so, yeah, it's it's done it's done um so what do you want people to know about your work, mm -hmm. can you can you do a succinct? I mean, what is yeah. that's, a, that's a tough one. Yeah, I'm really, I just want people to know that my work is about a journey and a process. Right, um, it's a process of trying to understand me and my relationship to other people, to the world. Right, um, it's about going on that going on that journey, but then leaving leaving like hints and trails and things and stuff 
behind, right? Because like thinking about the ancestor, uh, comment that Mariah made, and then also Monique being in the space, uh, Monique always shared that like, you're somebody's ancestor, so act accordingly. And so I think for me, my art is about if I'm gonna be somebody's ancestor, then I wanna leave behind things, trails, pieces and stuff, right? To help you go through that process as well too. Um, and so, yeah, that's what it is. That's so, awesome. Coming to yourself, yeah. You're such a fabulous human being. Um, do you have a favorite kind of creative work and why? A favorite kind of creative work? Yeah, like, yeah. Like of my own, or you mean like somebody else's? I'm sorry. Like someone else's piece? Or? Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. I think that's what that question is asking. Yeah, is there somebody else, one or two people that, or maybe back when you were in Erie, Pennsylvania, and so what mm -hmm. kind of art? Well, you've got the comic books that drew you. Yeah, yeah. So there's, there's, there's three. When I think of like art inspiration, so right one. This is a, in in college. That was a big issue I had with people. I was like, I don't know. <laughs> Half the people whose stuff I like, they're on something. Tell you who they are. I don't know who they are, right? Um, but there are three different artists who really kind of shaped things for me. Um, one was Adrian Piper, and so I loved how she was like out here going like I'm leaving these cards on people. Like, you you know, I'm at a bar, you talking this nonsense next to me, and so I leave this card with you and let you wrestle with that for a moment. I thought that was, like, amazing. <laughs> Ooh, like, so just the act of, like, using your art to, to like, you know, interrupt something or have that kind of cognitive moment, I was like, oh, that's fire, right? So I love that. Um, then I don't know the names of these two artists, but I remember the story that there was this um, man and woman who tied themselves together and lived with each other for a year. They were from different sides of the world, didn't really know each other all like that, but they were like, we're, how do, they were performance artists and they were like, how do we live out of art, right? And that was the project they did. And like for me in that time, like I was trying to find myself creative, creatively. And this is when I started getting in the performance art. And I was like, yo, what would that look like to just like, hey, you and I were about to live with each other for a year and just go through life and existence literally tied up to each other. And like thinking about what that means in a literal way and also like a like, you know, metaphorical way to be tied to a person and just having to navigate life like that. To me, I was like, that's hella powerful. Right. Um, and then I would say the third people person is actually like, like a collection of people, right? It's just like, like all the different black artists that I've seen, right? Yeah. Um, I think maybe if I'm going to name one other person, just to throw it out there, I'll say Ed Williams, who was on the call. Say him for the drive, for the drive to like have to look at comic books not see yourself in the stories and then to manifest that into your own comic book. Um, this, this Ed Williams here? Yep, this Ed Williams here, right? Um, to, man, to turn that into your own thing, I've always just been amazed by that, right? Like to have that and to like have that drive and to keep going and to keep doing it. And um see it manifest into where you're at comic cons and all these things and stuff. I'm just like, that's it. You know what I mean? Like I don't even gotta go far to like people who I've never met. It's like, there's the person who I've spent many days with, right? And will be with for years, right? That's that's it, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Cam is suggesting Marina, how do you say that last word? Abramovich, Abramovich. Is, yes. that, who, is that who did the, the piece, Cam? Or is that? Yeah, maybe. Or isn't, that, or isn't that the isn't that the one who did the uh, thing where they like sat with each other and didn't speak? I don't know. Yeah. Again, so, so on the history side of art, I'm a horrible. I am. <laughs> history class. Art is not your degree. We're not. Killing it wasn't, it. and I really struggled through it. I will. I will admit, I really struggled through it. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> and that's also the hard part about my PhD is also like, I remember stories, thoughts, and feelings, and it's, and you would think with me talking about no self so much that I can really remember names of people more. But yeah, yeah. It's hard. I soak in. I because it's yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's that's fine. I will say. Um, I wanted to ask. Um, uh, so you have your 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 email group and your sketch group. Yep. Um, do you have a a Patreon or how are you? You know. Are you making any money off of this? I mean, you know, how do is that like, you know, we want to pay you for your work and your time. So Cameron, wait, Cameron says, yeah, I believe it was something that she did. So yeah, 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 yeah. No, so yeah, yeah. So she did she had a she did the jump. Yeah, Marina did the one where she's at the at the at the uh she she was at like a museum and they were sitting across from the table and it's like you sat there and you didn't speak to each other at all. Um and, you, and then her ex lover or something like that did come and they were there for like whatever that time is, right? But it's not, that's not who it is uh, who did the thing where they were tied together. Okay. At least I think so, but yeah. So Patreons and stuff like that, I do not have a Patreon or anything of that nature, right? All I have is that you can join uh, my group and we're just kind of kicking it, right? This is more so just like me doing that but what you can do though right is you can buy a t-shirt so right what i say is if you buy a t-shirt either this or you can buy the draw from life t-shirt no self or this one the no self or the draw from life t-shirts that's the way that i ask people to support me or buying my art um in those ways otherwise right like then we're talking about are you bringing me for like a, a workshop or a session for a, con for a community thing or like to come and do some of my DEI related work. But just of like you wanting to sew into what we've got going on and making your individual contribution, buying a shirt is great for me because then it's cool, right? To see that in other places on social yeah. media or in person. Cause it's like, Oh, we know something, right? Like we we have that, and that's that's what I love. So yeah, that's that's the best way. And yes, and we can we can here at the Octagon we can attest to um, uh, to to Jordan's. Um, you say DEI? It's short for uh, diversity, equity, inclusion. Yep. Diversity, yeah, equity training, and because of you know we're a bunch of. We're just a bunch of women here. We need to uh, definitely diversify, but we're working on it. Um, it all comes together. It yes. Um, so we should probably um, wrap up because it's been a little over an hour, and I want to thank you, Jordan. Um, thank you. And I want to thank everybody who joined us, and it was so fun. Me too. <laughs> banter going on between your folks and your sister. <laughs> and, I love it. Um, really hope someday to meet them and and your wife. Thanks to your wife for um, helping to promote. Oh, she's yes, thank you, dear. Um, support BIPOC artists. Support art. Um, please visit Jordan's website. We'll have this will um, get posted to YouTube, so we'll have uh, Jordan's links on there um, on the YouTube description. Join his groups. Um, if you need a shirt, contact Jordan or contact the Octagon. Yep. Uh, when we ship stuff, we don't charge extra for shipping. You know, I only charge you what exactly the shipping is. And so please visit our, our website and Jordan's website. And we're going to get through this pandemic so we can do things in person. But yeah, yeah. Right. And hopefully, like I said, we'll have we'll have enough of these uh note to self pieces to do something. But I appreciate you, Terry, right, for the opportunity. Um we were joking about it before we got on a chance meeting and things have been like so amazing since. And so I appreciate uh you and how you uh, have uh definitely welcomed me into the octagon space and everything. So thank you. You're you're a you're a super cool person and we we just um yeah. We feel very blessed that you are here in Ames and helping us out. We appreciate it. So thanks to everybody. And we will, we'll shut it off. We could talk all night because I know. <laughs> right. <laughs> but you've got other things to do, I know, and stuff. But yeah, thanks, everyone. And thanks so Thank much. Thank you all for showing up and coming. I appreciate that love and community. Thank you.
Okay, take care. Bye-bye. Peace.